Here is your Radio Theater Channel weekly podcast for download. The RTC still has the very best old-time radio on the live streaming. And if it's music you love, tune in to the RTC Music Channel, where this link and many others are on our website at oldtimeradiolisten.com. Now, here's Jim. Thank you, Tim, and welcome to the RTC Weekly Download. I'm your host, Jim Dolan. This week, we'll start off with a radio play titled The Awful Truth, starring Cary Grant and Irene Dunn, as heard on the Hollywood Radio Theater on January 18th, 1955. Welcome to Hollywood. The Armed Forces Radio and Television Service brings you the Hollywood Radio Theater, starring Cary Grant and Irene Dunn in The Awful Truth. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we present another of our 20 greats, The Awful Truth. Not only was this Columbia Pictures screen hit one of the funniest comedies of all time, but it brought together two of Hollywood's greatest comedians. Our stars, Cary Grant and Irene Dunn. Now act one of The Awful Truth, starring Irene Dunn as Lucy and Cary Grant as Jerry. The sun lamp room of a midtown Manhattan athletic club. Hank, the attendant, is piling towels on a shelf as a young man in gym trunks makes a hurried entrance. He's Jerry Warren, a tall, well-built, and healthy. But just now, there's a sharp contrast between his decided pallor and the two dark, magnificent circles under his eyes. Morning, Mr. Warner. I had a high this morning. How do I look? Well, you look a little, uh... Yeah, yeah, uh, well, never mind, Hank. Just turn on that sun lamp and give her all she's got. Mm, about 15 minutes on each side is all I'd recommend, Mr. Warner. 15 minutes, nothing. I've got to get a deep flower at the tan if it takes all afternoon. Give it the juice. Well, okay. Attaboy. Now, don't forget to turn me over when I'm done. Hiya, Jerry. Oh, hello, Frank. Heard you were in here. How about a little game of squash? Oh, sorry, Frank. No time. Say, you're awfully white skin for a guy who just spent two weeks in Florida. <laughs> You know, that's what I thought, too. Could it be you didn't go? <laughs> oh, don't let an idea like that get around. Oh, I see. Pulling a fast one on the little wife, huh? What was it, a poker trip? Well, you know, a fella's got to bust out once in a while, assert his independence. Yeah, well, how would you like it if Lucy pulled a stunt like that on you? Well, why should I mind? A person doesn't have to stop being an individual just because she gets married. Yeah, maybe. Hey, how about coming over to my house for breakfast? We were out a little late last night, and some of the gang is stopping I've by. I've got a much better idea. Tell everyone to come to my place. Lucy can fix some breakfast for us, and maybe later we can sneak away and have a game of golf. What do you say? You talk me into it. I'll see you later. Uh, here we are. Come on in, everyone. The joint is yours. Jerry, that sunburn. Why, you're positively vermilion. Uh -huh. Oh, wait till Lucy sees what Florida did for you. Yeah, where is she? You, Lucy. Surprise. <laughs> oh, hello, Walker, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, how you been? Hey, where's Mama? Where is she, Smithy? Welcome back, Mr. Warner. Oh, hello, Celeste. Will you tell Mrs. Warner I'm here? Yes, I'm Smithy. sorry, sir. Mrs. Warner's not at home. She's not home? Well, where did she go? I... Well, I don't know, sir. Well, when did she leave? I'm not sure, sir. I think last night. You mean she hasn't been home since... Uh, oh. oh, well, okay, never mind. Now, what's the matter, Jerry? No welcoming arms to greet you this trip? Well, Lucy probably ran up to her Aunt Patsy's cabin in the mountains. She always does if she gets lonely. Suppose her Aunt Patsy wasn't home. Oh, that's very funny. Seriously, I wish Lucy wouldn't go out and get some fun for herself now and then. That's the trouble with marriage. People are always imagining things, and the next thing you know, they end up in a divorce court. Yeah, the broad-minded man from Miami. Well, now, if you think you're going to get a chance to prove my broad-mindedness, you're crazy. She's up at her Aunt Patsy's cabin, and I'll bet on it. Hello, everybody! Oh, but Aunt Patsy's cabin, huh? There's Aunt Patsy now. Oh, yeah, well, uh, hello, Patsy. How did you get here? By invitation. Lucy invited me yesterday on the phone. Say, where is Lucy? Uh, that, it seems, is the $64 question. Hello, hello, everybody. Oh, hello, oh, hello darling. Darling. Lucy. Jerry, oh, Lucy. Jerry, darling. What, oh, Jerry? Hello, darling. It's good to see you. What are you... You just look marvelous. No. 
Oh, oh, I nearly forgot Armand. Armand, come yeah. on in and meet everybody. Armand's the best music teacher a woman ever had. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Jerry, you know Armand Laval, of course. Yeah, sure. How are you? Everybody Armand. else, this is Armand. Yeah. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, I guess we look a little silly in evening clothes, but yeah. we had an awful night. That's right. You see, Armand's car broke down, oh, well, a million miles from nowhere, mm -hmm. and uh, he had to park me in a farmhouse. Really? And then he had to hike back to the nearest town to get them to tow the car. Mm -hmm. And then he had to stay at the garage all night, and then he picked me up this morning and brought me home. Oh, it was dreadful. Uh, we were uh, coming home from a party. Yes, you are the loveliest human being there. Oh, thank you, Arma. Mm. Uh, Jerry, dear, you do understand, don't oh, you? Yes, sure, sure, of course. Mr. Waringer, you have the continental mind. Uh. Yes, that's it. I have a continental mind. Will you have an eggnog? <laughs> uh, Lucy, dear, I'm so sorry, but... I have to run. So soon? Well, now, what's the hurry? The party hasn't even started yet. Oh, yeah, sure, we know. But you probably want to talk to Lucy. Come on, people, give you all a hitch. Okay. <clears throat> uh, well, Mr. Louvel, uh, why don't you let Frank give you a hitch? Well, I wanted to explain. You see, Mr. Warringer, the next time I take your wife out, I hope... I hope you buy a new car, or else I'll loan you mine. Are you hungry? Why, yes, thank you, I am. Well, why don't you run out and get yourself some breakfast? <laughs> Mr. Warringer, what have I done? That's what I'm going to find now, out. Now, look, Jerry, you don't believe. We'll discuss this in private, please. Very well. Perhaps that, that is best, Lucy. Yeah. Will I see you soon? Of course, Alma. Thank you for everything, Lucy. And, Mr. Warringer, I think you must be out of your continental mind. <laughs> Well, that was pretty funny, is that? I mean, what he said. Ah, ah, ah. Very funny. Well, he's gone. Now, you can speak freely, darling. Yeah. Well, Lucy, Let's what have see. you got to you say to yourself? yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I knew you'd say that, so I, I'm prepared to answer. Mm, I bet you are. Um, Armand was invited to the party by a young man whose sister is a pupil of Armand's. Armand invited me to go along. I went because, um, believe it or not, I was lonely. And then the car broke down. Yes, his car is very old. So is this story. <laughs> Do you wish me to go on? Sure, let's have a Well, I stayed thing. at the farmhouse. As I said, I slept badly because of insufficient blankets. Twice during the night, I coughed. Oh, Let me see. Was there anything else? Now, look, Lucy. Now, this situation isn't as amusing as you seem to think it is. Now, if you had the sense to see it, you'd know that our marriage is teetering on the edge of a cliff. Or perhaps you have no sentiment left for me. Look here on the table. There's a letter I wrote you from Florida. You didn't even open it. Why, it's enough to destroy one's faith, isn't it? I haven't any faith left in anyone. Not even that conscientious soul at Miami Beach? The one who followed your direction so nicely and mailed me a letter every day? Well... What are you talking about? Darling, I don't like to be unpleasant, but you weren't in Florida. Don't change you the subject. You weren't in I... Florida, and you weren't in Montreal that time. You said you were going there. Once you even had letters mailed from the wrong place. Dear Lucy, <laughs> Charleston is such a quaint city. Well, it is. The quaint thing about Charleston was the postmark was Perth Amboy, New Jersey. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Now, now, don't try to justify your behavior by insinuating things I about me. I haven't any behavior to justify. I've just been unlucky, that's all. Look, you came home and caught me in the truth. And it seems there's nothing less logical than the truth. Uh, a philosopher, huh? You don't believe me. How can I believe you? Listen, Jerry. Don't you see that there can't be any doubt in marriage? The whole thing is built on faith. And if you've lost that, you've lost everything. Yeah, I suppose when that is gone, the marriage is washed up, isn't it? Do you mean that? Sure. Well, I guess that settles it. Well, I guess it does. And let me tell you something. Listen, let me tell you something. I wouldn't go on living with you if you were dipped in platinum. So go on, divorce me. Divorce you? Are you crazy? Do you think I want people to think you prefer that, that music lover to me? All right, then I'll divorce you. That's customary anyway. Has something to do with a husband being a gentleman. Oh, no. Now, never mind the gentleman stuff. Just get going on it. All right, I'll call my lawyer right now. By the way, darling, what's the most convenient day for you to be divorced? Uh, 
And in the case of Warner versus Warner, the court grants an interlocutory decree of divorce to the plaintiff, Lucy Warner. The divorce, if not further contested, will become final in 90 days from this date. That will be all. Uh, Your Honor, there is one matter still unsettled. According to my client, Mr. Warner, it is a matter of... It's a matter of Mr. Smith. Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Smith. And who is Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith is... He's their dog. No, no, no. Mr. Smith is my dog. He's mine. He is not. Silence. But, but Mr. Smith belongs to me, and she's got him. I told you to keep quiet. Oh, ignore him, Your Honor. I told you he was impossible to get along with. Quiet. Him. Now, let's have the facts. The animal at present is in Mrs. Warner's possession. Mr. Warner wishes to have him because... No, because he's mine. He is not. He is so. He is he not. Is so. Silence. Oh. This seems to be a custody case. And in custody cases, we frequently permit the final decision to rest for the, uh, the dog. Bailiff, have the dog brought in. Custody of the dog will depend on his own desire. And let me warn you, neither of you must use any false means of influencing the animal's decision. <coughs> Unfasten the dog, please. Now. You may each call the dog. Come on, 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 come why, it looks like his favorite rubber bone. Where did he it? get it? Where did he get well, it? Well, how would I know? You hid that bone under your handbag and he smelled it. What? You're not going to get him away from me like this. <laughs> get him? Well, I've got him, darling. Bye. Oh, rain, rain, rain. Look at that rain. Why, Aunt Patsy? Is it doing anything besides falling? You know, if I'd known we were going to be buried side by side, I'd never have consented to take an apartment with you. But I needed you. You know the period of readjustment that comes in the wake of a divorce? Oh, readjustment, my foot. That's just another word for moping around. We could at least go somewhere where there's a little life. Well, we can't go out without escorts, so that's that. Well, I don't need an escort to go down to the lobby. I'm going down to the newsstand and see Joe. He may be funny looking, but he's a man, and maybe he knocks off early. Aunt Patsy, you would. I wouldn't, huh? <laughs> You're talking to a desperate woman. Oh, well, I guess I've read pretty nearly everything here, Joe. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, ma'am. Yeah, uh, too bad they stopped printing zippy stories. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's what my wife says. Oh, your wife. Well, that settles that. Oh, uh, pardon me. Did that copy come in of the Tulsa, Oklahoma bugle? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Leeson. I guess maybe there's something wrong with the mail. Oh, I, that's too bad. <laughs> Looks like I won't find out how we did the rodeo. <laughs> oh, uh, I do, ma'am. Well, uh, how do you do? <laughs> uh, I, I hope you don't think I'm fresh. My name's Dan Leeson, room 1214. Uh, Ma and I have seen you coming in and going out sometimes. Oh, we've noticed you, too. What, you did? Uh-huh. Well, uh, say, who is that beautiful girl who's with you sometimes? She got a dog. Oh, I, she, she's beautiful. Oh, that's my niece, Lucy. She's just a little homebody. No. Yeah. Uh, say... I wonder if uh, you'd do me a favor. Why, of course, Mr. Leeson. What is it? Well, you see, I I'm a stranger in town here, and Ma and I don't know any folks, so I thought... Go right in, Mr. Leeson. Oh, thank you. Oh, I think it's just wonderful that we met this way. Oh, Lucy, dear, may I present Mr. Leeson? Mr. Leeson, this is my niece you were so anxious to meet. Her name is Lucy Warriner. How do you do? Uh, how do you do, ma'am? Mr. Leeson's from Oklahoma, Lucy, and uh, he'd take it as being right neighborly of us if we'd uh, show him some of the bright spots. Well, it's raining rather hard. Mr. Leeson lives right across the hall. 
with his mother. Uh, isn't that what you said, with your mother? Uh, yeah, yeah, with Ma. We're here on a visit, you see. Uh, I'm an oil, you know. Marinated, so to speak. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I got to remember to tell that to Ma. <laughs> I'm sure she's adoring. Yeah. Well, tell us all about Oklahoma, Mr. Leeson. Well, well, we all think Oklahoma's pretty darn swell. <laughs> oh, there's a the door. Excuse me, I'll get it. Uh, like I was saying. Oklahoma's pretty darn swell. Well, hello, Aunt Patsy. Oh, uh, but Jerry. Oh, dear. Well, how's the old girl? How are you standing the rainy weather? Huh? Oh, we never let an occasional drip bother us. Right <laughs> in. Oh, thanks, Patsy. Uh, oh, dear me, you've got company, huh? Well, well. Well, hello, Lucy. <clears throat> hello. What do you want? Uh, uh, read this little legal document. I guess that'll explain better than I could. Isn't it? What is this? Well, it's a writ. That's what it is, a writ. The court just ruled that I am permitted to see my dog for two hours a week. <laughs> I am permitted to take Mr. Smith walking or riding or motorboating, aquaplaning. No, 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 not aquaplaning. That's too dangerous. The order reads that I can visit with him and entertain him in any form or manner that does not endanger life or limb. Because that would rule out aquaplaning, you see. Mm -hmm. So I suppose you've come to take him bicycling. In this weather? Are you crazy? Why, he catches death of cold. Where is Mr. Smith? Oh, uh, I'll get him. Uh, Miss Warner, maybe I'd I'm better leave. I'm sorry, Mr. Leeson. This is my husband. Oh, uh, I, I mean... Oh, oh. oh, oh, he's only my husband for another 60 days. 59. Well, how are you, Mr. Leeson? Howdy. I'm glad to know uh, you. Uh, excuse me, what did you say? Uh, I said I'm... Glad to know you. Well, how can you be glad to know me? I know how I'd feel if I was sitting with a girl and her husband walked in. I'll bet you do. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing, Jerry. Oh. Why don't you go and play with the dog? Why, sure, where is it? Oh. Hey, Mr. Smith! You were telling us about <laughs> Oklahoma, Mr. Leeson. Oh. Oh, yes. Well, you see, I'm, I'm really a, a, a man of many interests out there, Miss yes. Warner. Uh, oil is, is my main business, of course. I, I can't complain about that. It, it's treated me real... Oh, Jerry! You broke my leg. Uh, oh, it's nothing. I'll get you a new one. Well, uh, as I was saying, Miss Warner, I got a big ranch out there, just outside of Tulsa, you know, and I got just about it. Oh, Jerry! Do you have to play that game? Yes. Go get his rubber bone for him. He loves that bone. Oh, sure, the bone. I remember. Where is it? In the closet. Uh, right here. You hear? That's right. I can't find it. Just keep looking. Hey, hey, what do you think? You locked the door on me. Patsy, what are you hey, doing? Let me out. Lucy, dear, uh, why don't you just run along, with no, Mr. Leeson? Me, Say, is there anything wrong? Oh, no, no. It's just a game Mr. Warren Patsy, has with the dog. Oh, I see. <laughs> Mr. No. Leeson, come on, let's go. Well, swell. Good night, Aunt Patsy. I hope you know what you're doing. Good night, dear. Patsy! Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll break the door down if you don't let me know. Just a minute, just a minute. Come on out, Jerry. Now, where is she? Where did she go? Who? Are you trying to cook up something between my wife and Buffalo Bill? <laughs> Your wife? Well, she's still my wife for 50, 60, whatever it is. Yes, day. 59 yes, days. But she's still my wife. Yes, and what are you going to do about it? You stick around and watch. I've got some rights around here. To entertain Mr. Smith in any form or manner. Oh, shut up. <laughs> We'll have the second act of the awful truth in a moment. You know, with our servicemen stationed in so many countries around the world, they have a wonderful opportunity to observe the customs and traditions of other people. They're finding out that these customs aren't so strange after all. For instance, in many countries, what is known as puberty rites still exist. These are celebrations, sometimes accompanied by singing and dancing, of a child growing up. Before he takes his place among the adults, he may be required to show his courage, his knowledge of the history and customs of his people, his ability to be a good member of that group. Among some primitive groups, 
This may even include physical torture of one sort or another. Well, this might sound strange, but as our servicemen have observed, it has its counterpart in our own life. The initiation ceremonies of high school or college fraternities, the coming out parties of debutantes, the bar mitzvah among members of the Jewish faith, these are all examples of the same thing. Actually, the mental and physical examinations that a young man takes before he puts on the uniform of his country are merely scientific tests to ensure the same thing, to see if he's qualified to take his place among others. And this is true about customs and traditions of all countries. The way of doing things may be different, but the ideals are the same. Our servicemen are helping to maintain goodwill by observing these customs, by learning about them and honoring them. This, after all, is one of our traditions, to let the other fellow have the same rights and privileges that we want for ourselves. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of The Awful Truth, starring Cary Grant as Jerry and Irene Dunn as Lucy. It's morning a few weeks after Jerry's hectic visit. Across the breakfast table in their lonely apartment, Aunt Patsy is looking at her niece with an expression of growing amazement. What did you say, Lucy? I said, of course I like Dan Leeson. Why shouldn't I? He's sweet and thoughtful, Patsy. You should be the last one to object. You introduced him to me. Well, only because he was a man who could take us out. Now, I didn't expect you to get silly about him. But is it silly to like a man who's sane and considerate? I was married to one of those gay romantic types... And one is enough. Your toast is burning. I tell you, I'm serious about Dan Leeson. He's a fine person. I like him. I like him very much. I'm all through with Jerry. Doesn't mean a thing to me. I don't love him, and what's more, I probably never did. I hate Jerry Warner, and I like Dan Leeson very, very much, and I hope he's just mad about me because I think he's the finest man I ever met. Lucy! I know my toast is burning. <laughs> Honest to goodness, Mr. Warner. I think it's simply wonderful of you to come here to just to hear little old me sing. Hmm? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, Mr. Warner, you're awful sweet and all that, but, you know, you always seem to have your mind on something else. Oh, maybe it's someone else. Am I right, sugar pie? Oh, yeah, well, you know how it is. I'm in love with love. In the spring, a young man's fancy likely turns to what he's been thinking about all winter. <laughs> Say, uh, how long have you been talking like Amos and Andy? Hmm? Oh, for a long time. Yes, it helps me in my work. Mm -hmm. Well, shut my mouth. Who is that gorgeous-looking creature just coming in? Hmm? Well, uh, oh. Well, <clears throat> you've heard that old gag about who was that lady I saw you with? Oh, you mean that's no lady, that's your wife? Ah, uh -huh, that's my wife. I guess this is our table over here, Lucy. Yeah. Sit down. Come on over and meet her. All right. Well, well, hello. Hello. Oh. Hello. Well, uh, this is Miss Dixie Bell Lee, and this is Mrs. Warner, and this is Mr. Leeson, the gentleman Mrs. Well. Warner is going to marry. <laughs> I'm mighty proud to meet you. Well, now, uh, now, you're sure we're not intruding? What, uh, what do you mean? Well, wouldn't you like us to have a drink? Well, thanks, Dan, I will. Oh, oh, oh uh, why, yeah, sure, of oh, course. Sit down, Dixie. Thank you. <sighs> ah, my, isn't this cozy? <laughs> so, uh, so you two are going to be married. Well, I was glad when I heard that. I said to myself, that lease is just the man for Lucy, and then I said to myself... He's always talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a charming place, don't you think, Miss... A uh, Dixie Belly. Well, I'm so glad, because I kind of feel like the place is mine. Oh, you come here often? Oh, I work here. Didn't you all know that? Oh, no. Say, you're from the South, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> oh, isn't he just the cleverest yet? How'd you all ever guess that, Mr. Man? Oh, I don't know. It's just a shot in the dark. <laughs> well, you see, Dixie Bell Lee isn't her real name. No. No, no, no. She, she changed it because her family objected to her going into show business. Isn't that right? Mm, that's right. Oh, well, I, I guess I'd better go now and get ready. 
Uh, can you all stay to see my act? Well, of course we'll stay. Why, well, nothing could drag us away. <laughs> see you later, honey child. I'll be here, dumpling. <laughs> She seems like a nice girl, Jenny. Oh, she is. Wait until you hear her sing. A golden throat, that's what. I, I keep coming here all the time just to listen to her. How faithful of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, does, does she really sing awful good? Well, yeah, but I don't think her singing's up to Lucy's. But Dixie has a sort of Val Finn charm. A je ne sais quoi, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan, dear, um, don't you think uh, you ought to ask Jerry about it now? What? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Huh? About what? Uh, about our mine, Jerry. What mine? You know, our coal mine. Oh, that's... I was telling Mr. Leeson how badly it was doing, mm-hmm. and he thought maybe he could do better with it. Yeah, that's right. I, I'd like to gamble on it, Mr. Warner. I'm pretty lucky. You know what they call me out west? No, but I can guess. <laughs> uh, boy, how about us having a conference in my apartment tomorrow? Well, huh? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure that I present that great little artiste, Miss Dixie Belle Lee. Here she comes. Isn't she pretty? Oh, she sure is. Costume's a little short, unless she does a tank act. Now, listen to this. Put another nickel in, in that Nickelodeon. All I want is loving you and music. Oh, yeah! Oh, I'd do anything for you. Hey, you want me to Is that what you mean by I elf and charm? Yeah, not bad, huh? Hey, say, she'd go great in Oklahoma, wouldn't she? No. Come on, honey! Ah! <laughs> Dan, I don't feel well. Oh, oh, what's the trouble, Lucy? Come on, take me home. Oh, but Lucy, we can't walk out right in the middle of Miss Lee singing. Well, don't you like her, Lucy? Oh, I love her. <laughs> of course, I can see where it was easier for her to change her name than for a whole family to change theirs. Come on, Dan. Well, if you want, Lucy. Uh, don't forget about tomorrow afternoon in my apartment, Mr. Warner. You know, about the mine. I'll be there, Dan. I'll do anything for you, anything you want me to. All I want is loving you and... Sit down, Warner. I want to hear all about this coal mine. Yeah, well, I got all the records in history with me. And by the way, Lucy, I searched all over for the report McCall made before we bought the mine, but I couldn't find it. You must have it. Well, perhaps I have. Yeah, well, when you get a chance, take a look through your stocking drawer. You know, Dan, she always hides important things in the top drawer of her dresser. Oh, oh she does? Oh, sure. Every legal paper we ever had smelled of sachet. Even our marriage certificate. About the mine, Jerry. Uh, oh, yes, yes, the mine, the mine. Howdy, folks! <laughs> oh, well, come on in, Ma. Come on in. Sit down. Hello, Mrs. Leeson. Afternoon, Lucy. Uh, I, I guess you don't know this fella here. Eh? He's Jerry Warner, Ma. Well, hello. Warner? You mean that, that, that he is... Uh... Yeah, yeah, that's right, Ma. He's the one. Oh, well, it's very funny seeing you here, Mr. Warner. Well, it's pretty funny seeing you, too. <laughs> you know, I met some people today, and they spoke about you and about Lucy. They knew you both before the divorce. Well, I imagine you run into dozens of people who did. They spoke very well of you, Mr. Warner. They said you were a real gentleman. Oh, well, you can't please everybody. (laughs) Oh, they talked about Lucy, too. Well, it's good not to be forgotten by your old friend. You know, Lucy, I've heard your fine singing voice, but I never realized that you must have had a teacher. They tell me he's been teaching you for some time, and he's a very romantic type. I also heard that... Well, never matter. Well, what's that? Well, um, um, look at this map, Lisa. Now, about this new opening in the northern side of the mine. Here, let me show you the prospectus. Jerry, I think I ought to tell you that nobody's listening to you. Huh? Well, what do you mean? What could possibly be more interesting than the Warrener mine? The Warrener divorce. The gal's name needs clearing, partner. Oh, that's ridiculous. Is it really? Of course, Mrs. Leeson, so are you. I mean, uh, no, no, no. Sit down there. Now... Our divorce was one of those tragedies you read about in the newspapers. A trusting woman and a worthless man. Lucy is above suspicion, always has been. She's as pure as the driven snow and as faithful as she is fair. I tell you, something wonderful went out of my life when I lost her. Uh, I, I know just how you feel, Mr. <laughs> Warner. How do you know? <laughs> how can you know how I feel to have used up the best years of a woman's life? Well, folks, I'll be leaving now. 
Uh, excuse me, ma'am. You're sitting on my perspective. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, take good care of her, Dan, won't you? I'm sure you'll be happy out where the West begins. All three of you. <laughs> Goodbye now. Huh. Oh, well, Ma, are, are you convinced about everything? Yeah, but what about the music teacher? Look, you two. I'll go and you can settle things for yourselves. Let me know how it comes out. Put a light in your window if it's yes and two if it's no. And if you can't make up your minds, just pull down the shade. But all I want to know is, why is Armand Luval coming here? Because I sent for him. He ruined your last happy home, and he'll bust the Oklahoma deal wide open. There isn't going to be any Oklahoma deal. Huh? I'm not going to marry Dan Leeson. Well, why not? Because I'm still in love with that crazy lunatic Jerry Warner, and there's nothing I can do about it. Oh. Answer the door, will you, Patsy? Yes, all right, all right. Oh, good evening, Mr. Leval. Oh, good evening. Armand, come in. Ah, thank you. If I, I got your call, what is the trouble? Uh, look, Armand, sit down. Oh, thank you. It's about Jerry. Oh, yes, your husband. He's, uh, he's a very funny man, eh? Yes, he is. But I'm convinced he still cares about me, or he wouldn't do the funny things he does. Uh, yes, but he does not care much about me. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And uh, that's just what I'm getting at, Armand. You know everything was all right that night, and, and I want you to convince him that everything was just as we said it was. Well, I'd be glad to. I'll go to him, tell him. Does he carry a gun? <laughs> now, you're not afraid of him. Of course not, but you know how And said. look, Alma, he mustn't know that I've had anything to do with this. Oh, very well. And will you do it as soon as possible? Yes. Open up! My day to see Mr. Smith. Oh, oh it's Jerry. <laughs> but this is much too soon. Yes, isn't it? Well, uh, well, do something. What shall I do? Well, well, you just can't stand there. Go in the other room. Go on, hurry. I hurry. do not care for this. <laughs> All right. Set him in, Patsy. Oh, dear. You said it. Uh, greetings, Patsy. Oh, uh, hello. Oh, hello, Lucy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what is that mean? What's the matter? Hmm? Nothing. Uh, uh, well, I, uh, I guess you two want to be alone. No, Patsy. Uh, I'll, I'll just... Whip up a little omelet in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, she's a smart girl, you Aunt Patsy. I did want to be alone, Lucy. Oh, you did? Yeah, no. Listen, darling. I've been a sap. Have you? Yeah, well, I just said so. <laughs> and I want to apologize. I know that that idiot Lavelle couldn't have meant anything to you. And, well, I, I just want to say I'm sorry for everything. Oh, oh. well, look, Jerry, uh, let's meet later and talk it over, shall we, huh? Well, sure, but... Oh, wonderful. All right, here's your hat. Goodbye. Yeah, dear, but... but, but... I'll call you. Goodbye. Well, are you trying to get rid of me? Well, why should I try to get rid of you? Here's your hat. <laughs> my hat? Uh, this isn't my hat. Uh, oh, oh, isn't it? <laughs> well, look, look at this thing. It comes down over my ears. Oh, well, isn't that funny? But, but did you get a haircut, maybe? No, 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 not, not since I came in. Now, look at it. Doesn't that look funny to you? Well, it's a little roomy, but maybe they're wearing them that way this year. Well, I don't think so. Oh, well, Aunt Patsy, get the bell. All right, you? all right. Oh, oh, look, if you've got company... Oh, I'll... it's nobody. It's probably Dan Leeson. Leeson? Well, I wouldn't want him to see me here. And I've caused well, you enough it... trouble, Lucy. I'll just duck in the other... Oh, room. no, 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 no Jerry! No, Jerry, no! Jerry, wait, wait! Oh, oh, dear! Hello, Miss Adams. Uh, uh hello. Uh, it's Mr. Leeson and his mother, Lucy. Uh, 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 hello, Lucy. Uh, Lucy, dear, I've come to tell you something. <laughs> Hello, hello. Oh, we've come to tell you, Lucy. Yeah. Well, what have you come to tell me? Well, I want to apologize for those awful things I accused you of this morning. Oh, uh, yes, go on. What's that? I think somebody's cleaning up in the other room. Lucy, I don't want you to be angry with me for repeating what that awful woman but said about you. I'm not morning. angry, Mrs. Lisa. What nonsense. What is that? Well, it is... Uh, uh, Oh, 
They forgot to touch second. <laughs> Who was that? Was that Mr. Warner? Yes, he just dropped in. And out. Oh, Dan, I think we'd better go. Two men hiding in the other room. Well, all I gotta say is, a man's best friend is his mother. Come on, Ma. <laughs> Oh, Lucy, don't. <laughs> now, don't cry, dear. She believed it. He thought all Mom was hiding in that room. Nah, sure. So did his mother. I'm talking about Jerry. Oh, oh, Jerry. You know, it's getting hard to keep track. Well, now, what's the matter with Jerry? Read this. This newspaper. Hmm? Let me see. Jerry Warriner is being seen these days with Barbara Vance, the madcap heiress. We wonder if there'll be wedding bells when Jerry's divorce becomes final in two weeks. Two weeks? That's bigamy. She's not married to him yet. No, and she won't be. He said he'd stick to me for better or worse. And if he knows what's good for him, he'd better. <laughs> In a moment, Act Three of The Awful Truth. Sergeant Kenneth Kaiser was the first man of the 40th Infantry Division to die in Korean combat. And his memory is perpetuated today in the Kenneth Kaiser High School, the first coeducational high school in all Korea. It's a tribute, too, to the men of the 40th who wanted a living memorial to one of their heroes. The buddies of Sergeant Kaiser raised the $16,000 that went into its construction. They planned the building, and they provided much of the labor. 285 boys and girls there proudly wear the tiny enameled metal pins that are replicas of the insignia of the 40th Division. It's a dynamic, continuing memorial that has promise of making its influence felt for generations to come. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of The Awful Truth, starring Irene Dunn as Lucy... And Cary Grant as Jerry. Two weeks have gone by, and the divorce is almost final. Determined to block Jerry's impending marriage to the society heiress, Lucy has tricked her way into his apartment. Just inside the door, she stands facing him. Hello, Jerry. Oh, hello. Well, now that you're in, what's the nature of this visit? Well... You know what today is, don't you? Certainly I do. Our divorce becomes final tonight at 12 o'clock. That's right. Oh. So I just thought I'd drop up to wish you a lot of luck. Well, now, that's very nice of you. But I'm just on my way out. Oh? Where to? Well, if you must know, I'm on my way out to a pre-engagement party for Barbara and me at the Vances. Jerry, you can't. Well, who says so? You can't because you love me. Well, Bob is a fine girl. We get along fine together. Jerry, look, it's... It's no fun for me to come here practically crawling to you, but our marriage is worth it. I'd do anything to make you understand that, that you and I belong together. Tomorrow will be too late. Once you're free, the Vances will officially announce your engagement, and, and you'll be caught by circumstances. Ooh. You'll be lost, Jerry. I'm very contentedly, too. No, you'll be miserable. Oh, you dope. Why can't you understand? I'll take it. Oh, no, you won't. This is my house. Wait. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello. Who is this, may I ask? I, I think it's what's her name. Give, give me that phone. Hello, hello. Do you have to answer my telephone? I only said hello. Oh, shut up. Now, what am I going to tell her? Oh, tell her to call back. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, hello, darling. Well, it took you long enough. Have you made up your mind who the woman is? <laughs> That's funny. I knew you were going to ask me that. Mm, no. So did I. Who was she? Well, it, uh, it's really very simple. That was my, uh, my sister. Oh, really? Oh, how are you ever going to get out of that one? Keep quiet. I didn't 
know you had a sister. Well, certainly. She just got back from Paris. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I'd love to meet your sister, Jerry. Why don't you bring her along tonight? Uh, no, no. I don't think she could come over this evening. Uh, she, ha she has a previous engagement, doesn't she? Oh, it? I'm sorry. Well, she's very eager to meet you, dear. Yeah, uh, tell her I'd love to meet her and tell her to wear a boxing glove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Barbara, she said if she possibly could, she'd break her engagement and come over later. Yes. That's... Could she, Jerry? Yes, but I doubt it very much. Yes, I doubt it very much, too. Well, mm -hmm. if she can, she can, of course. That's right, dear. I'll do my best to fix it up so that the two of you can meet very soon. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Hurry over. I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in a fine fix. She wants to meet my sister. Well. You're a big help. Well, you know me. Anything I can do. What? To break it up? Oh, I see what you mean. I'm in a fine mess. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. She trusts you, doesn't she? Of course she does. Hello? Hello? Jerry, I did it again. Oh, come on. Give me that thing. <laughs> Hello? Hello, darling. Mother absolutely insists on your bringing Listen, your sister Listen, you don't have to tonight. take that but, from anybody. <laughs> Darling, I told you she couldn't make it. Tell her. Just, just don't me. stand you for it. Tell her. That well, no, no, no. Listen, there's no reason for you to call me up every five minutes, is there? Jerry! Uh, goodbye. Well. <laughs> oh, please, keep quiet. Well. <laughs> Sit down, my boy. Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Vance. It's too bad your sister couldn't come tonight, Jerry. Yes, well, uh, she's, she was terribly sorry, Mrs. Vance. You see, she, uh, she didn't weather the boat trip very well. You can imagine my surprise when I heard a woman's voice on the phone. You can't blame me for being suspicious, Jerry, darling. <laughs> Certainly. I mean, uh, of course not. I was thinking, dear. Mother, don't you think it would be nice if I asked Jerry's sister to be a bridesmaid? Oh, lovely. <laughs> well, I think she's going back to Paris almost immediately. But then you'd like my sister, Barbara. She's very much your type. Where'd she go to school? Uh, uh, excuse me. What did you say? I said, where'd she go to school? Uh, Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh. <laughs> and uh, you say your father was a Princeton man. Yes, that's right, sir. Class of 1902. He tells some very funny stories about the place in those days, too. He tells one in particular about a football game. You see, it seems that Yale was playing Princeton. I this day. beg your pardon, Mrs. Vance. Uh, yes, Edwards? Mr. Jerry's sister has arrived. What? <laughs> Miss Lulu Warren. Well, hello. Well, I made it, Jerry. Surprised. You maniac. What'd you say, dear? I just asked how you were feeling. Well, I'm feeling fine. Uh, Mrs. Vance, may I present my sister, uh, Lulu? How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? It's so lovely to know you, Mrs. Vance. Uh, Vance, dear. Of course. <laughs> uh, Barbara, this is Lulu. How do you do? How do you do? Well, it's sure nice getting a chance to meet you. I've seen your pictures in the newspaper, but I wondered what you really look like. <laughs> I've wondered about you, too. Oh, thank you. Oh, Lulu. Yes, dear? Uh, uh, this is Barbara's father, Mr. Vance. Mr. Vance, my sister. How do you do? How do you do? Well. well what's the matter? Oh, nothing. Only I never would have known you from Jerry's description. I think you're cute. <laughs> uh, won't you sit down, Miss Warren? Oh, thank you. Say, did I interrupt something? Uh, well, I, I was telling a story about my, uh, about our father. Oh, well, go ahead, dear. Thank you. You see, Mr. Vance, it was Yale's ball on Princeton's two-yard oh, line. Mrs. Vance, I, I don't want to appear rude, but I wonder if I could have a little drinky. <laughs> Why, certainly I had three or four before I got here But they're beginning to wear off And you know how that is <laughs> well, Don't look at me like that, Jerry You're like a little drink yourself You know what we call him, Mrs. Van? We call him Jerry the Nipper <laughs> He likes to sneak him when nobody's looking He's awful cute about it, too <laughs> Yeah, I've seen him go along a whole evening and apparently not have a thing to drink and all of a sudden fall flat on his puss. It was. A glass of sherry for Miss Warren, now, please. Sherry. Oh, no, I don't like sherry. Eddie, come here. Me, miss? Make it a yes, good miss. slug, will you, Eddie? Very good, miss. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Jerry. What were you saying? <clears throat> well, I was uh, just telling them one of Father's stories. You've heard it. Oh. Uh, you see, there was a minute to go. Dad had the ball and... Ball? What ball? Well, the football. 
Well, what in the world was Dad doing with the football? <laughs> I, I was just telling a story about when Father was at Princeton. Now, you remember that. Oh, yes, sure, of course I remember. You know, Pop just loved Princeton. He was there nearly 20 years. <laughs> he just adored it. And he certainly kept it looking beautiful. You've seen the grounds, of course. <laughs> The grounds? Of course. <laughs> I, uh, oh, I'm afraid that my sister has a somewhat distorted sense of humor. So have I. Your drink, miss. Oh, gee, thanks, Eddie. Uh, what she really meant to say was that... Oh, gosh, that was good. I sure was thirsty. Must have been the ham I had for dinner. <laughs> no, listen. Um, say, where do you get your liquor, Mr. Vance? That is, if it isn't too personal. Well, that was imported from Paris. You don't say. Well, that's pretty good stuff. Ever I manage to get to Paris, I'm sure going to look up the guy that sold it to you. If you ever get to Paris, didn't you just come back from there? Who, me? Well, I only wish I had. Oh, I guess that's one of Jerry's little stories again. You know, when Jerry and I were kids, we were the worst liars in the neighborhood. <laughs> we always used to pretend we had rich relatives who were going to leave us dull. Oh, it was harmless enough. Everybody knew we were just kidding ourselves. You sure everybody knew? Oh, sure. Who'd be dope enough to look at Jerry and me and think we had money or family? But you have to give Jerry credit. We're proud of him. He's worked himself up from nothing to this. What do you mean by this, Miss Wilder? Now, I'm different. It isn't money that counts with me or position in life. No, sir. You know what it is? Art. You know, when I was working at the Virginia Club, I used to you say... You worked at the Virginia Club? Oh, sure. Didn't Jerry tell you? No, he didn't. You're, you're a singer, Miss Warren. Yes, that's what I do. I sing. Perhaps you'd sing for us now. Uh, uh, no, well, no, no. Some other time, Mr. Vance. That's I, the I, trouble with you, Jerry. You tried to keep me in the background all your life. Of course, I'll sing for you. You own a piano? Right there. Oh, thanks. Well, you see, when I would... Say, wait a minute. Don't anybody leave this room. I've lost my purse. Good gracious. <laughs> There's your purse, Miss Warner, and the chair. Oh, well, am I relieved. Say, Eddie. Yes, miss? Keep an eye on my purse, will you? Uh, <clears throat> Lulu, Lulu, I think we'd better go now. It's no, getting no, late. not before I sing, Jerry. Uh, what are you going to sing? Well, it's a kind of a surprise. The first time I sang this number, I killed him. You know, there was a fella, I think he was a critic, and he said my voice had, um, oh, what was it? A kind of an elfin charm. A je ne sais quoi, if you know what I mean. <laughs> now, quiet, everybody. Uh, Barbara, I'm afraid I'll... Quiet, have... Mrs. Van. Uh, <laughs> I'll Yes. Come on, dear. Yes, Lulu. Come on home. That's right. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Good night, Mr. Bank. Good night, Mr. Bank. Good night, Mr. Jerry, aren't you speaking to me? No. Well, that's better. It was wonderful of you to drive me up here to Aunt Patsy's cabin after all the trouble I've caused you. Mm -hmm. I'm delivering you over to your Aunt Patsy, and then I'm leaving for good. I don't blame you, Jerry. I, I really don't blame you. <sighs> Thank you, Jerry. You can leave now. No, no. I want to see you safely in the door where you can get in your aunt's hair and out of mine. What? Mrs. Warrener. Oh, hello, Frank. Well, I wasn't expecting anybody tonight. Will you tell Aunt Patsy I'm here? Why, she ain't been here for weeks, Mrs. Warrener. <laughs> I get it. Another one of your little tricks, huh? Well, it won't work. I'm going back to town and I'm going alone. Good night and goodbye. Bye, Jerry. Be careful driving, dear. Hey. What's the matter? Uh, the keys to the car. Where are they? What? The keys to the car, the ignition key. Where is it? Well, I don't know. Did you have it when you came? Well, how do you think I drove up here? <laughs> now, now, listen, Lucy. You, you took that key and I want it back. I haven't got the key. You have so got it. 
You want to search me? Yeah. No. <laughs> Poor Jerry. Well, I guess you're stuck here all night, darling. Oh. Now, isn't that a shame? <laughs> Nice, sitting here in front of the fireplace. Just the way it was when we came here on our honeymoon, Jerry. Oh, now, please, Lucy. The less you have to say, the better I'll like it. Well, it won't be long. It's a quarter after 11. 45 minutes and you'll never have to listen to me again. Just 45 little minutes. Never think about me. Never let me spoil your happiness, Jerry. Mm -hmm. I'll get along all right. Just be happy, darling. Yeah. No one will ever know that... Oh, I shouldn't say these things, should I, Jerry? But I'll get along all right. Oh, wait a minute. Yes? Now, listen, Lucy. What? It's all off. I'm not going to go through with it. I don't care whether you love me or not. You're married to me and you're going to stay married. You hear? Jerry! Call the caretaker. No, no, I'll call him myself. Frank, Frank, come in here right away. Anything wrong, folks? Yes, listen, Frank. You're a witness. See, the divorce is off. Oh, Jerry. Now, at exactly 30 seconds before 12 o'clock, we called off the divorce. You remember that and swear to it? You betcha. Thank you, Frank. Good night. You be Oh, if you'll give me your car keys, I'll put the car away for it. Oh, yeah. Here they are. Catch. Ah, you betcha. <laughs> You couldn't find those keys. I did. And you had them all the time. I did. Well, what do you know? In a moment, our stars will return noticed him poking around, he could claim that he was looking for the wagon master in order to take care of the paperwork. Striding boldly up to the tent... Too long ago, the city of Port Angeles, Washington, adopted a five-month community improvement plan, a plan designed to teach a community how to improve culturally, economically, socially, and spiritually. The plan was such a success that the United States State Department brought over eight people from the little town of Rosenheim in Bavaria to see how the plan worked. At first, the Germans were suspicious, but their suspicions gradually disappeared as they recognized the Americans' genuine friendship. For three months, they lived in various Port Angeles homes, learning about American democracy. They visited schools, worked in groceries, hospitals, welfare offices, and on the local paper. By comparing ideas, both the Germans and their hosts discovered that they were working for the same ideal, to advance the principles of freedom, tolerance, and brotherhood. When they finally left for home to teach others how typical Americans really lived, it was a Rosenheim lawyer who best expressed their gratitude and appreciation when he said, I had no notion of American life, since I thought that usually both husband and wife worked, that children were poorly brought up, that there was no family life in our sense of the word. I've come to the conclusion that it's a religious motive that makes the American people so willing to help not only individuals, but whole nations toward freedom and recognition of human rights. Yes, like so many other Americans, the good people of Port Angeles had learned that by helping others, you help your country. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are for a well-earned curtain call, Cary Grant and Irene Dunn. Was the awful truth the first picture you two ever made together? Well, it was the first comedy. The next one we made for Columbia Pictures was a drama called a Penny Serenade. Yeah, I saw the television of Penny Serenade last Thursday. I thought it was wonderful. It was a good production, I thought. Well, next week we have a romantic drama of the colorful period following the American Revolution. 
It's the exciting story of a lovely woman who resents the handsome overseer of her father's plantation, Zangaree. Paramount Pictures' adventurous drama. And as our stars of this Pine Thomas production, Arlene Dahl, starring in her original role in Sangaree, and Cesar Romero. Well, we won't miss that one either. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> it certainly is one of our friends. cast tonight were William Conrad as Dan, Paula Winslow as Patsy, Hans Conrad as Armand, Martha Wentworth as Mrs. Leeson, Virginia Gregg as Barbara, Norma Varden as Mrs. Vance, Herb Butterfield as Mr. Vance, and Hard McNear, Beverly Barnes, Robert Bailey, Joe Gilbert, Harley Bear, G.G. Pearson, Joe Forte, Bob Bentz, and Eddie Marr. <laughs> Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, Ken Carpenter, inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. That's it for this week. We'll be back next week with more old-time radio. I hope you can join us then. Till then, this is Jim Dolan thanking you for listening.